Hey folks, Quillian here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Dwarf Fortress. We are in mid-autumn of the year 51, so I've let a little bit of time run since the last episode, uh, which includes having a Dwarven caravan show it up. So we traded a bunch of mugs for um, some coal, some leather, some cloth, nothing too terribly exciting, and then also gifted an entire bin worth of mugs. Uh, to them, which uh, should help later on for becoming capital, as well as, um, I think, increasing the wealth they return with, which should give us a better chance of a big migrant wave. So we'll see how that goes. Otherwise, the roof work continues. We have all the blocks that we need to complete everything here. As you can see, there's no more little uh, clock icons here, so there's nothing else that has been enqueued. So all the blocks are there. They just have to be brought up to the surface to do that. The other thing is, well, actually, we're going to give some serious thoughts to some tr animal training stuff, taming stuff, which I've never really done. We clicked the button last episode um, with the uh, the langers here, and then they're having to re get retamed because they do break. But I was doing some reading on the Dwarf Fortress wiki about this, and we're going to we're going to experiment with some training this time around. We're going to set up a proper animal training area. It's just it's something I've never played around with and maybe. It could be something quite potent for us. So we might give this a go. I don't think the uh, langers are necessarily the way to, 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 you know, optimize around that, but we'll do what we can with what we've got. Now, the other thing is this floor over here where I had been doing some exploratory digging. I went ahead and canceled the remaining designations because first of all, it's quite clear we weren't going to get iron ore on this floor. And the other thing is I was actually worried about um, accidentally destroying some tree roots here, which would destroy a tree on the surface and generate a hole that could be a back door into our base. We'd have to go and look for all the uh, blank spots. I don't think anything has been exposed thus far. Um, I don't know if there's a quick way to tell without entering squint mode, but I think everything here is is sealed here. Um, so I decided to abandon that. I mean, obviously in the, uh, the sand, we're not gonna find metal ore anyway. So cleared that. And instead what I did on the floor with our trading here, I started another exploratory today. What I did is I did the diagonal thing and then I just cut a square around an area and cancel it inside just to make sure that we had, you know, full integrity here and the ability to be flexible with our rooms. And as it turns out quite quickly at the bottom side for here first, found a bunch of magnetite, which is an ore of iron. So we can actually consider get started on our ore industry. Before we do that, though, we're going to take a quick look at one of our dwarves again. Last time we looked at the happiest, this time we're going to look at crankiest. Persian Aurora, our Fisher Dwarf here. What's going on with you, Persian Aurora? So she has a natural inclination towards language. Very good sense of the position of her own body. I think that's good for military stuff. And a feel for music. She, okay. She does not generally seek retribution for past wrongs. She only rarely feels strong cravings or urges. She lives a fast-paced life. She often feels envious of others. She tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions. She tends to share her own experience and thoughts with others. She likes a little excitement now and then. She is grateful when others help her out and tries to return favors. She enjoys the company of others. She stammers when she's annoyed. She clicks her tongue occasionally when she's bored. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. Does not mind being outdoors, at least for a time. A lot of these are, um, are, are shared between everyone here. Um... So I don't think we need to necessarily read through all of them on all their dwarves. Personally, doesn't particularly care about craft dwarfship and doesn't care about art one way or another. She dreams of mastering a skill. She likes claystone, nickel, choral, coral, alpaca wool, cotton fabric, eight-sided prisms, bucklers, earrings, the sound of the flutes of meandering, the sight of the lyrical stains. When possible, she prefers, prefers to consume peach cider. She absolutely detests worms. Unfocused by unmet needs, distracted after being unable to pray. Well, we might we might have to start some temple stuff here. Moment, just adjusting my microphone. There we go. Not sure if that was leading to background noise. Um, unfettered after arguing. Okay, and in terms of skills, Fisher Dwarf Lie Maker. So not actually any relevant skills with Persian Roar at this stage and things. So kind of a blank slate for us, perhaps. And that's not a bad thing. We're still waiting for a lot of smoothing to happen. I mean, our our labors, you know, we're still a little bit overloaded in our queue, um, which is why I might, even though we do have access to iron bearing ore right now, I might not go and immediately kickstart our metal industry just because we're we're kind of busy. I suppose I could take the uh, the miners off the exploratory digging for now because we've found a bunch of stuff, but we may as well let them go ahead and finish the floor. It's hardly a hardship. I mean, it would open up a couple more haulers slash constructors but that's okay. 
yeah, lots of storing things in the stockpile, of course, especially after the trade here. There's still tons of things waiting over here. And again, we're still waiting for the roof to finish. So tons and tons and tons of busy work, which is why we kind of, we, I think our fortress has been growing a lot faster than our population has. And as such, we've got this backlog of jobs. But otherwise, things continue well. So let's talk about this whole animal thing. I'd already mentioned that perhaps I would set up our pig pens relatively near the surface so they'd be close to the butcher thing. Well, I'm also thinking about setting up a big room, a big chamber that is going to be where we hold the cages that have captured creatures and then build an animal training area around that. I don't want to designate things right now. Well, I suppose what we could do is we could do the planning, right? Dig out some sort of hallway off to the side, designate some large-ish room here, 10 by 10. Actually, we'll make it 11 by 11 just have the one door over there. This could be our pig pen. It doesn't even need to be this big, but maybe. Um, we could also plan to have our um, our egg room, right? We could we could do something like that. And I don't think we need a tremendous amount of space for this. We could maybe make it with little alcoves. We can put the nest boxes in those little spots. That would look nice. Yeah, we could do something kind of like that. Uh, I guess I can extend this out to here and then do that. And then for the training room, I think we'd probably want a space that was fairly large. You know, conceivably maybe put a couple of different entrances, although that's not uh, centered up, which I don't. I really only need the one entrance that's close by, doesn't it? There, we'll just do that. And so the idea is a big stockpile for non-empty cages in here. Um, and actually, we could consider a stockpile for empty cages near the surface as well, because there's a good chance these are going to have to be reloaded with cages relatively often, and that might not be a terrible idea. But for now, we'll just do this. And the idea is this is going to be some sort of training room, which there's a zone for animal training that's involved. I've never done this, so we're going to mess with that. It does need some food stored up here as well for the uh, the training. So that's something we'll experiment with, but later on, if nothing, I mean, it might be too early for us to think about the training. And in any case, it's going to be too early for us, I think, to justify uh, mining out and filling out these areas. Although the pigs, I mean, the pigs, I think, are doing fine roaming wildly. But maybe I should at least get them and the egg stuff. You know what? I'll cancel this. Maybe I will dig out the rest of this and let's do it at a higher priority. And I realize that this isn't going to be in our full airlock because we've got this gate behind the trade depot. So this would be before that, but it would still be behind our main gate over here. So I don't think there's a huge amount of risk in this. So let's, um, oops, to here. Am I comfortable with making it at that spot? Yeah, that's fine. Let's do this and just a higher priority to make sure this is getting done before the rest of our little experimental digging stuff is happening. And then I guess we need 12 nest boxes, don't we? So let's go in here, make an order for rock nest box and ask for 12 to be made, please. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, first exploratory dig tunnel over here, which we're not worried about. And then new one here. So yeah, we have access to tons of magnetite. Finally, I'm so happy about that. Dormitory still there. We'll take a look at the jobs. Yes, obviously digging. And yeah, the farmer and planters. Well, this farmer Theodolus here is actually. Um, well, are you set to do it exclusively? Yeah, you're exclusively on brewing. Where do you still have the farmer title? Yeah, I mean your planter skill is still better than a brewer one. Also, you're weirdly rusty for the brewing. Uh, we did buy a bunch of drinks, so I guess you haven't been having to do the brewing right now. And that might continue to be the case, actually. We might end up just constantly trading for enough drinks. I'm not specifically asking for it. Oh, I did put a um, a reduced, um, what is it called, the low traffic area over here, just to discourage people who are like looking for job or pathfinding to pathfind through here. So it should, adding all this should hopefully not add as much pathfinding complexity as it might normally do, but we'll see. You dig store items. Yeah, a lot of that. Attending a meeting, which is interesting. With who? I mean, I wouldn't have thought it was the merchant. You're not the mayor. Or maybe you're attending a meeting with, well, we don't have a mayor, but maybe you're attending a meeting with our expedition leader, Pyramid. Hey, 
are you storing an item in the stockpile? Strange. And yet, I think it's also strange. I don't think we have any children in the fortress. Which, I mean, full-grown adults are more desirable because they can do everything. But, you know, the children would be fine with the, you know, to do the hauling. I mean, again, there's no reason that we would specifically aim for them to, to be here. But it's just a little unusual that we got... I mean, we haven't gotten that many migrant waves, I suppose. But it does feel strange that we haven't gotten any. Because normally we we have way too many. It's a good thing, though, like, in previous versions of Dwarf Fortress, they were basically useless. Now, at least, they can... Um, you know, they can do these chores. Oh, we do have one! Tenzin! Over here! Ah, we have one Dwarven child. Okay, my bad. So, theoretically, Tenzin's spending all their time mostly hauling stuff, which we clearly need a lot of. Um, I'm wondering, so Theodolus here, we could take them off the exclusive brewing thing. Maybe I'll do that, because I think they're spending a lot of time there. Uh, pick, I'm going to leave it on. They might, they might not have to be planting constantly. It's entirely possible, but... I think I want you very focused on that should something come up. Don't distract yourself with um, with hauling or stuff if there's any plant work to do, because I think there's going to be plant work fairly consistently. But we are good on the brewing for now, because I think we've got our limit set to like 100 drinks, which we're going to want to increase that at some point as our, our fortress grows. But for now, that's a perfectly valid target. These places are still yeah, absolutely filled with things. We've got tons of blocks sitting in these places as well. We don't have a dedicated block store. Well, that's not true. We do on the surface, but yeah. Everyone just is constantly so busy. So what we could do is that I might not want to assign anyone specifically to do the metal work jobs. But we could go and at least fill our order screen here with the workflow required for the smelting. I suppose what I could do is we could set up the labors for them. But then, and then make it that only select to do it, but not actually assign anyone to it. So, for example, we're going to want a wood burner so that we can... Um, is that under furnace operating? Or is it its own thing? I thought it was its own thing. But I might be remembering older versions. I thought... Oh, no, there's wood burning. There it is. So... I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to go wood burners. Only select to do this, but we're not going to select anyone. Then we'll have furnace operating, which is going to be too long for this little text. So we'll call it furnace ops. Again, only select to do this, and we're not going to assign anyone to it right now. And... Hmm. I want to subsplit these? I mean, yeah, really, I do. This would be Weapon Smiths. Armor Smiths. Armoring, but. I guess Armorers. Armorers. Specifically, this is. Uh, you know what? I will go Armor Smiths. Because it's important to remember that this is metal armor and not leather armor. So Smith makes it feel like it makes more sense. And then. I don't remember what blacksmithing is versus metal crafting. But we're not going to actually queue up any jobs for this right now, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, let me go and just delete this for now. That's going to be okay. Okay, so now what happens if I set up work orders that use these places? No one's actually going to do them right now, which is great. Because what I'm probably going to do is on the order screen, and then I'm probably going to go ahead and import one of the pre-made uh, recipes for it. So... We'll probably set up the furnace jobs. So if we look down here, you can see it's going to try to make uh, charcoal and uh, got a couple of these for different purposes. If we go and uh, that's not the one I want. We go look over here. This is the one that keeps lots of charcoal around as long as we've got tons of wood. And um, yeah, that's basically it. It tries to keep it's a big bulk charcoal job to maintain a lot of coal around. But this is assuming we have tons and tons and tons of logs available. Um, and then we've got this other charcoal job over here, which doesn't make as many and doesn't try to maintain as much, but it's better for a low number of logs. So let's make sure we have any, um, any refined coal whatsoever to keep things bootstrapped. And this is the one that's making sure we have lots of it around. So 
we've got those, which is fine. Pearl Ash, Collect Sand, and Glass. We don't actually have any Glass Furnaces set up, but we may as well leave those in there. And then if we get some, uh, some candy, those will be queued in. And if we've got anything flagged to be melted, we can do that now. Uh, designating things to be melted is still kind of annoying in the default UI, but DF hack is now, um, has a text based filter that makes it easier to search for say a uh, very worn out or low quality metal objects or this and this and this and this, just because the stockpiles don't really give you mega fine control over certain aspects. You can with a uh, DF hack flag a stockpile to be auto melting. So anything that gets put in the stockpile will be tagged to be melted, but the actual filtering for like the goods is is in is still vanilla DF and it doesn't have full control. Um, so we've got the first steps in the UI and I can't remember what the text command is. I'm gonna have to go and check it. I, I don't need it now, so it does, it's fine. But we've got the first steps to building the new enhanced stocks view, which is presumably what what's gonna happen. That plus maybe better filtering for the uh, stockpiles. At least we could do it in text. So the next time we get a big goblin raid or something like that, we could consider using a text command to designate a bunch of stuff to be melted down, which is great. Okay, so that's the first part of this. We're then gonna go ahead and import the smelting job over here. Now the smelting job, if you just import it by itself, I believe would also do a little bit of charcoal work, but I don't think it's gonna override the existing stuff. But now what this is gonna do is it's going to try to smelt every single ore. And this is very convenient because assigning each one of these is kind of annoying. So this just tries to do, for every type of ore that exists in the game, try to smelt one per day. And it is smart enough to check to see, like, so Galena, it's only gonna do it if we don't have enough lead bars. So if we have at least five Galena and at least a hundred refined coal, cause it's considered presumably not a very high priority job, do this. Whereas if we take a look at magnetite, that one's pretty important because we do have magnetite and we wanna use it. It still tries to maintain at least a hundred refined coal, which is like, wow, they really wanna make sure you don't run out of this stuff. And then for pig iron over here, yeah, it's really targeting those numbers. I wonder, is that is that a ridiculous target? Or is that entirely reasonable? I don't know, but we can throw it into the order system anyway. Ooh, it is winter. Um, and again, none of it's gonna happen right now because all the jobs that would use it, like we will see, there we go. We'll see the job show up in the queue here, right? Make charcoal, but no one's actually gonna operate on it because no one's been in, um, activated, which is fine because we're way too busy. So I don't want them to have to do any of that. How's the roof? Still coming. Food, drinks, fine. We don't have a lot of seeds currently. Now, um, I think Seed Watch is running, right? Yeah, it is. So this is going to, this can automatically turn on cooking of seeds if we have way too many seeds of a particular type. Um, the important thing, normally what you wanna do is you wanna ban the cooking of seeds. In kitchen, seeds, you don't wanna allow um, these things to be used. So that, that is currently set, it is banned over here. There's also a DF hack command to ban all in bulk because I think by default it might allow these and you don't wanna like cook these, um, these seeds and then not have seeds to plant. And actually speaking of, you also gotta be very careful when you are cooking things, like let's say cooking our plump helmets, right? Because when you cook something, the seeds get destroyed. Cooking with plump helmets doesn't give you seeds. Making drinks does, or eating it raw does, but cooking it doesn't. So that's another thing where you might wanna do a bunch of, of banning and things there, um, uh, just ahead of time, just to make sure that you don't cook with those things. Obviously, you gotta cook something. And so what happens is basically, if you have plenty of seeds, if you look and you've got you know tons of seeds for plump helmets, then you could start cooking plump helmets as well, potentially cooking seeds because you've got plenty in the bank and that's okay. Managing that is a pain in the butt. And so DF hack is really convenient for that because otherwise it'd be very easy to accidentally overcook things or something like that. But um, on the other hand, if you're doing hunting or if you've got your pig ranch going on, um, or you're generating eggs from your, your turkeys or you know any kind of bird, then, then you're gonna be in better shape because um, you'll have meat that you can use. All right, let's go ahead and plant a door here and here. And we're gonna plan our next, bo next boxes, which are, what category might they be under? I mean, oh, they are in the farming, workshop farming. It's not a workshop, but sure. We're gonna plan those there. And then we're gonna make a zone 
here, this is going to be our pig pen. Now pigs don't need to graze, and I don't know, they just eat lichen or bugs or something like that, so you don't have to worry about it. We'll use DF hack over here, and if we search for pig, there we go. I'm going to say it's, it's nice that it, uh, it, it uses the actual base race here, because the, otherwise they're called, yeah, sows, boars, and things like that. So we're going to designate all of our pigs to this pen, and then as they give birth, they should continue to, they should be assigned to the same place as where their parents were. Now, for the auto nest box, trying to remember how that works. So it's running, which is good. Use this feature, must create pen pastures on the same tiles. Okay, so we've got to make one by one uh, pastures on the same place in net boxes. Bigger than one by one, not to be there, but it's okay. We'll make a bunch of one by ones and uh, it is already enabled. So I think it's going to be okay. Although we could run, we could run a now on it afterwards, but zone pen pasture. I think if I did this, it would be the same zone. Right? Yeah, that becomes the same zone, which is not what we want. Erase that. So we just want to do this. Oh, we're still on erase tool. I hit enter? No, accept. And then hit this, that, that. I mean, unless I misread something and the auto nest box actually has an ability to do this for you, but I don't think so. So the idea with this is you could, if you're not using the F hack, you could just have a big zone over here, but the, 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 the turkeys or whoever would be kind of inconsistent about using the nest boxes or whatever. So the trick is, and you can do this without the F hack as well, is in each one of these one by one zones, you assign exactly one female egg layer to each one of these. And um, and that guarantees that they're in, they have a dedicated nest box ready to go for them. So you can see that's already happened. All these hens over here are there. Now, and they will keep laying eggs. They'll be unfertilized eggs and we can use that for eating. If we wanna set up some breeding, then I believe what we wanna do here is set up another pen pasture like so, and then assign here we want our, um, so those are turkeys, right? So we want our gobbler, our male turkey, assigned there. Because I think what happens is when they end up adjacent to a turkey, they could go and do some fertilizing. So what we're gonna wanna do is run this for a while so that we, oh, interesting that you move the turkey from one to the other. Um, we wanna run this for a while so that we can get more turkey chicks and multiply ourselves up to maybe a total of 12 hens and then at that point, we won't care about the male anymore. Uh, we could we could butcher them, or we could just change the zone restriction so they're limited to the middle over here, so they can't make any more fertilized eggs. Now, I could also force it, force the male to be like in a one by one pen adjacent to a female, just to make sure that works. And maybe actually, maybe that's the right thing to do. Because that would stop, I mean, that would guarantee that you have to go there, oh, this turkey's currently loose. Someone's going to have to go and bring it there. It'll guarantee that they're spending all their time adjacent to this turkey. These obviously won't generate any fertile eggs, but that might be okay. Now, I'm trying to remember, we have to go and stop eggs from being cooked right now. Because I don't think, I don't think we can choose. See, and eggs aren't here. I think we have to have at least one egg before we can block it. Although we did go, so yeah, there's this ban cooking tool that we can use. Uh, protects useful items from being cooked. And yeah, I think ban cooking all will by default block everything. And I think that'll bulk block all the, the eggs? I'm not sure. Well, we'll wait and see until some eggs get, get laid in one way or another and then see what our situation is. But yeah. Um, we've got auto butcher turn up. Let's take a look actually at the auto butcher UI. So for our pigs, it's currently set. Keep six adult females around, two adult males, and then up to five of each, and then butcher the rest, which is fine. And then, yeah, we've got some auto butchering. So butchering is happening. Well, it will once the butcher shop is done, 
which is a long, slow process. We got the Tanner's Workshop. Hey, great. Wonderful. Uh, this will auto tan hides for us. I don't think we have to queue up anything. I think it happens automatically. The tan hides, I think, gets auto queued. I probably. Yeah, automate tannery right there. But yeah, we need this butcher shop done. Which means, you know, anyone's got to have, like, any amount of idle time at some point. Some floor smoothing is actually happening. Oh, my God, our dining hall is ready to go. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's go and start kidding this out. So we're going to go... You know what I kind of want? This is very different from my normal layouts. Because a lot of times I do, just like here, these little sort of, you know, table blocks. I think what I want is one line, long line of tables here. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now because we don't need that many with a gap in between, because that's where, you know, the servants would come and, and serve things, which isn't in this game, but in like some, you know, medieval setups and stuff like that, right? Makes it easier for people to bring more food if it's just sort of facing this way. And I kind of dig this. We do want to get a door thusly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove both these zones. I'm also going to go, uh, the easiest way to do this would be to use the mass remove tool. I want to deconstruct all of those. But did I have to, I might have needed to hit enter on that. Oh no, they're already marked. Yeah, okay, good, good. Because then we can use some of these for this. Um, and let's redesignate this area. So first a dining hall. This is the multi, so if I do this, it'll automatically select all the appropriate walls. Good. And then for a meeting area, we'll do this. And then this is getting assigned to the Crystalline Onions, which is our hub. Um, we are going to want a couple of chests in here so they can store um, goblets and instruments for the pub. And then, yeah, we're going to put fancy statues and things in here. But in any case, this should be a much, much nicer dining hall already just by being smooth. We don't happen to have anyone who's like a champion engraver, huh? No, no one's an engraver yet. We could make low quality engravings. It would still add a lot of value here. Um, but I think this is long term going to be our place. Maybe what we'll do is we'll practice engraving on some of the bedrooms. Because right, we don't really need these bedrooms to have extraordinary quality. We can pick someone to potentially be an engraver. Or ideally, we get a migrant wave that's got an engraver already established. And I mean, if they're god tier already, then we don't care about making them practice. But if they're, you know, just adequate or whatever, we can have them practice on these regular bedrooms. And then as they get better, then we'll have them engrave the room. Because engraving does have a quality. Smoothing doesn't. Just skill is, is just equal to speed. But engraving quality makes a big difference. So um, next time we get a chance, we'll trade for a few instruments for our tavern. Yeah, so I'm not going to want these tables to go all the way to the end. We're going to want to leave, uh, I think it's 5x5, five five, might be a 6x6 six six space for a dance floor. But in theory, mugs are being deposited in here. Yep, that is indeed the case. Beautiful. And the drinks are over here. It's not, um, hang on. Maybe the mugs would almost be closer here, because they might go to here, grab a mug, come all the way here to get a drink, and then go back to the tavern, which feels non-optimal. Or I can just put the drink storage inside the tavern. Here, here, maybe in the back? I don't know. Next migrant wave, we might need more bedrooms. And you know, we have 24 right now, but the next migrant wave might be fairly big. I'm hoping I gave enough to the caravan that people are impressed with what we've got. We'll see. If I take a look at the egg boxes, I think it would tell us at this point, yeah, unclaimed. It would also tell us on that screen if they had eggs. Oh, um, we need to stop eggs from being carried away. It's not just the cooking part. Hold on. You, first of all, I catch all. Don't hold any more food. There might be a couple of categories that aren't being used anywhere else. That's fine. We'll deal with that later. Don't pick up any more food. And then down here, this is the raw food. We... I don't think we can differentiate between fertile and unfertilized eggs. So we just want to say, don't pick up any turkey eggs. The other thing I could do is I could have just locked, and maybe I should just as a safety thing, is I can lock this door. That will ensure no one comes in here and starts moving the eggs around and ruining our, our fertile egg stuff whenever that happens. 
Okay, I'm gonna actually, I will go and reshape this. Include there, so you can roam up and down over here. I don't know if you have to be reassigned to the pasture, which can't happen with the doors locked, but. Real low stamina. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh yeah, okay, you are moving around. So yeah, maybe, maybe you'll be able to go ahead and impregnate everything over here, and then we'll get lots of fertile eggs. And then once we get our first, like, pult hatch, then we can go ahead and open this up and not worry about it anymore. Some things might get... Oh, um, hold on. I need to make sure, der, that my auto butcher keeps for my turkeys. Adult females, yeah, we need to change this. Because I want to keep 12... Well, that changed everything. Oh, there's a tiny blue highlight. Dang it. Um, so this had been defaulting to two. So I'm going to set it back to two. Click on turkeys. Set this to 12. And then for the pigs, adult females, set it back to six. Sure. Although most of these, I actually don't care. Um, Most of this I'm fine with keeping full auto butchering. Uh, We could keep the yaks around because we're using them for wool. What if I just, for all new races, adult females, adult males, zero. We'll keep the youngins, they can grow to full age, and then we'll change. Then for the cats, keep two and two for the dogs. And if we, if we figure out taming, we might want to build up a bigger pool of dogs. For now, I'm going to keep the number smaller. So two females, two adult males, the pigs, females, I'll go six, and then males two and then the turkeys 12 and two and the yaks say four females i guess we get milk as well but i don't think we really need it too much and do that and i think the rest we can probably leave the auto butchering for uh i need to unbutcher these races actually because they queued things up there we go no unbutcher all uh no i think that's okay so that's the horses the cabbies the langers um you're not tamed so actually i'm a little bit worried about what's going on there although i guess they can't actually butcher the ones that aren't i don't know you know what i'm gonna reset these all and then say is there a way to force it now think I didn't screw it up. When push comes shove, we'll have to order some new ones to replace things. Okay. None of the butchering is going to happen anyway because we don't have the butcher shop, but once it's done, I don't want things to go badly, but yeah. there's We can go and clean this up. Obviously, it's not going to butcher pets. If we do get too many pets, if we get a cat explosion, then we may just do some gelding to keep the numbers under control. Alright, how's everyone doing? More smooth walling is happening. That's good. Does that mean you're done over here? No, just you're, for whatever reason, you're prioritizing this moving. Well, that's fine. Because um, with the auto unsuspend uh, plug-in running with the F-Hack, it, it is careful not to put the furniture in before the smoothing finishes, because the furniture, for whatever reason, cancels the smoothing job, which is bizarre. I think you can smooth it after the furniture has been placed, but it's just kind of annoying. So a lot of these bedrooms weren't being furnished until the smoothing finishes, which I could have messed around with a lot of the job orders, but now nah, this is all good and fine. Dwarves theoretically will be happier because their bedrooms should be quite nice. Not to mention, like, populated with lots of useful stuff. And yeah, we should, if we take a look at Pick over here and their thoughts. Oh, interacting with Pet. Um, I was wondering if maybe we'd get some thoughts about being near, you know, eating in a legendary dining hall or something of the sort. I don't think we can get that info now. Because there's overlapping zones, I think they, there's a debuff to the quality, but... The idea is if we overkill the quality enough, then it's not going to be a problem. Push comes to shove, I could make the bottom area the dining area and the top area the, the tavern. And with no overlap. But I don't think we have to worry about it. So yeah, them, um, these langers forgetting their training doesn't matter because they should have theoretically never been released from the cage. I don't know if there's an auto release with the tame. I don't think so. I think you always have to manually go and release them, which is a little annoying. 
but then once you do, then they can go into regular taming um, and ultimately full on training for battle or something if you want. Don't know if we're gonna, what is a langer anyway? I keep thinking it's a monkey. Yeah, it is a monkey, okay. I, I may not be pronouncing it correctly, but tough patooties. All right, let's take a look at the surface. And the roof, I'd say, is halfway done, maybe. The shape's irregular. Not all of it's rock salt, but so be it. You're okay. Uh, this exploratory dig, we're not doing much, although people are grabbing rocks out of it, which is fine. There's still tons of things sitting in the trade depot. Down, down, down. There. We've got space in here, which is great. These things are still super full. Yeah. Once the smoothing is done, well, then they still have to finish the roof. But we're going to get closer to actually having time to maybe, maybe actually haul some things for a little while. And wouldn't that be lovely? And yeah, there's no smelting going on because we haven't actually enabled the labors for that for anyone. We're ready for it. Everything's queued up on the theory. Oh, yeah, right. Nothing is happening until we've got the uh, coal. I still wonder about changing those numbers. Especially for the things we care about more. And maybe that's the idea, right? Like, we're going to smelt these random things if we end up with lots of coal around. But maybe what I want to do for the things that are a little more important short term, like the magnetite, right? Change this and say, uh, listen, let's let's just change this to 50. So this will get a bit of a priority. And then uh, for iron, for pig irons, same thing. 50. And then for steel bars... 50 over here. These things are going to happen a little bit more readily. And it's still going to keep us a huge pool of it. Arguably, maybe too huge of a pool for that stuff. I think that, yeah, those automated behaviors is just kind of a ridiculous target number. We will go, we do have a queue to make us up to 150 refined coal via charcoal with the wood burner. Um, assuming we've got tons of wood for it. And we've got tons of wood. You know, this, this is a very woodsy map. We can chop down way more trees. I can even enable auto-chop if I don't want to have to babysit it. I don't know. I'm kind of convincing myself to lower the number some more. Maybe like 20. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Which should be satisfied. Wait, really? Oh, right. That makes sense. We have a bunch... Uh, we have a bunch of... Uh, Butuminous, or however you say it, coal, but it hasn't been processed into coke yet. Pepsi okay? 20. And 20 over here. I mean, it's still not going to go forever because it's going to keep at most uh, 10 steel bars. So, hang on. In here, there's clearly an order to process the coal. Yeah, make coke from the coal here. Which is not checkmarked, which is interesting. It won't run unless we have at least five coal to start the process. This charcoal job is going and it's going to do it. Okay. So, if we went and enabled wood burning, that seems like a fine idea. Assuming I'm okay with taking some labor away, and I probably are, although we have no one... Um, no one with any wood-burning skill. On the other hand, who did we look at today? Persian Aurora. Hold on, I need to make sure I keep meaning to put notes of who I did. We did uh, Outer Moppet last time. So Persian Aurora. What if we just turn you into a wood-burner? Again, we're kind of hoping we get a migrant wave soon. And we, so we might shuffle Persian Aurora around, but for now, let's go ahead and do that. Persian Aurora, wood-burning is going to be turned on. Do I want to make it your exclusive job? I think it's... I don't know if wood burning literally has to be one that runs forever. Smelting will be, like a furnace operator. But will wood burning? Um, I don't know. But tell you what, we'll turn it on for now. Or what I could do is just make it so that anyone can do wood burning. Because you know what? It's every dwarf's prerogative to do that. There's an argument to be made. We are also going to want multiple copies of this. Mostly the smelter. We're going to want like... I don't know, probably three or four smelters going on. Although, if we're not doing magma smelters, we'll probably need to pair that with a bunch of wood furnaces because because we haven't found coal anywhere. So we're really going to be re um, reliant on the 
charcoal production. Mm-hmm. Take a look at Persian Aurora. Can we see them here? You should. Where are you? Right over here. Oh, you're asleep. Okay, fair enough. Say, I was going to watch you start to do the wood burning, but I guess that's not going to happen. Um, we can build a bars block storage over here. And by that specifically, I actually mean bars. So I don't want blocks. I don't want metal blocks either or anything else. Um, and really, it's coal or any metal bars can be stored here. Oh, there you are. Making charcoal. Excellent. So you're going to be quite slow to start off with because you have no skill in it, but that's going to have to be okay. Uh, we have nothing to cook. That's interesting. Now, I can change the order to not spam that. It could be a plant thing. Like a, a plant restriction designation. How about changing these numbers? And I'll probably set a filter. I don't suppose you don't have a... Well, I guess there's the basic. I think this might handle some cooking for us too, but I kind of want to involve it myself. This thing is still not searchable, right? Uh, that's such a shame. Especially this is going to fill up pretty fast. Uh, fine meals are over here. The solid items is currently complaining about. Let me go and just throw that in for now. Say we want at least 20 in there because we're going to make 10 fine meals. Um, that's not going to cancel the spam now because they've already have one generated, but it's going to have to be okay. So, seed watch. Cooking plants, yep. So do you, does so Seed Watch manage, yeah, manage the seed and plant cooking based on seed stock level. Okay, great. So right now, it's not going to allow plump helmets to be cooked because there's not enough plump helmet seeds. When there's enough seeds, does it enable both at the same time? It's like, I'm fine with it. It's got a target of 30. I'm fine with it um, enabling or enabling the plants, but like not both the plants and the seeds. I guess it's fine. If it keeps watching, it's going to trigger it okay. We might want to leave a bigger buffer, but I guess we're fine. The problem is currently we're not generating a lot of plump helmet seeds because we're not brewing them. Um, although our people will eventually eat them raw, at which point they will generate the seeds that way. Maybe I shouldn't be buying alcohol just because it does slow down the rest of the thing. Again, at some point we're going to get meat and then we'll just be cooking with that and that's going to be fine. Let's take a look at our nest boxes and see if we've got any progress there. That we can tell. It's unclaimed. And we ran into this issue before and I can't remember. I think our setup is okay. I think we just haven't had anything happen yet. It's possible the first batch of eggs were taken away when I wasn't paying attention. And so we're having to wait for the second one. Because I think the first, like, the first hatching is happens nearly instantly. You're not the hatching. First laying happens almost instantly. And then I think we might have to wait a cycle. So um, it's possible the first batch of eggs were taken away. I guess we could check our stocks. Egg? Yep, that's exactly what happened. Uh, these are currently forbidden. Where are you? Oh! Now, these are forbidden, but I... Which, so they must be getting auto forbidden thanks to the um, auto nest box. That's why they got moved, because they laid eggs here and then moved. But these are, um, these are non-fertile. I think it would say it. Oh, it's being instantly re-forbidden. Okay, so I guess I don't have to worry about locking the door or anything, because the auto nest box seems to be handling that for us. But yeah, I don't think those are fertile, which I think means this nest box is be freed up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do another um, look at what that is. I mean, I could turn off auto nest box. Again, we could individually. The fact that we have the better DF hack assignment here is quite nice. So I could say only show me egg layers. 
that are not assigned anywhere, right? And then I'd be, okay, click one and then do that. So it becomes a lot less painful. Anyway, we're going to go and put a cut in here. Folks, thanks a lot for watching an episode, another episode. As a reminder, of course, liking and commenting does great things for the YouTube algorithm. So it's always appreciated if you do that. Otherwise, I'm so excited for us to, once we get some migrant waves, build up a military and start poking around the world and causing some trouble. And maybe this time we can get the Goblin forces, Fortress to bend the knee um, by potentially not actually just directly attacking it. Although if they don't, what we could do is we could throw a few raids and a few attacks in there to hopefully weaken the population without losing too many dwarves to the, the demon lord that defends it. And then maybe we could ask them to bend the knee. We'd have to send a good number of people, but it might be like once we get to our max pop, what, 200, right? I don't think that's changed in Steam Edition by default. Um, maybe we put like a hundred of them to a military and send them out. I don't know. Oh, we should do an unforbid all. There's some uh, bolts and stuff on the surface that could be collected. Actually, this one is still weirdly forbidden. Huh? Some things are unreachable. Oh my god, I just realized something. These ramps don't work anymore. I got rid of the supporting wall. These ramps don't work anymore. Well, that's not true. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. These ramps work because they're against this wall. But this middle one doesn't, which is one of the things we ran into before with our caravans not working. So what I kind of want to do... I know I don't have to go quite this far out, but I want to do a little side tunnel. You can come up to the ramp, walk across this way, and do that. External interruption. Oh, no, you're fine. Okay. Just have to unpause. Wait, the surface should be reachable then. Because if this ramp works, you can get to here. I think I have to rebuild this ramp because it's non-existent anymore. So I have to build, construct, ramp right there. We've got the block so it's not suspended. Oh, but the ramp direction was bad. That's what it was. The ramp still existed, but they could only use the ramp to go this way. Now they should be able to use the ramp to go up and down that way. And they, they clearly are because they're going to the surface again. Yeah, okay. All right. And then once this gets built, our caravans will work. Okay, so now if I try again with the unforbid all... Some things are still unreachable. Uh, that might be our eggs. There's still some ammo somewhere. But this one here got fixed. There could be something unreachable. There could be something in a tree. Some of it might be subterranean that is showing up in the, the console that doesn't represent anything else. But yeah. Okay, this ramp is back. Oh, I completely forgot about the, the ramps breaking. But yeah, now we can see the ramp symbols are clearly there. Everything should be working again. I'm happy we caught that before we got our first caravan with wagons, because otherwise I would have been a little cranky sauced at having somehow again not made my wagons work properly. And here we can see the turkey eggs and the others don't. Okay, so we're waiting for another hatching cycle. All right, now oh, I'm so happy I just randomly saw that forbidden thing, which got me thinking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to end the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.